welcome, this is 15 Seconds of Fame. Uh, welcome to my channel. And uh, this video is gonna be mainly about uh, my battery and the BMS, things like that. Uh, doing a little bit of maintenance on the battery since the BMS that I have is not a true balancing BMS. So now I gotta go and physically uh, check each bank to make sure they're up to the correct voltage that they're supposed to be and that way I don't mess up the battery. So I don't wanna overcharge you know, certain banks all the time. And, so it's, a, it's kind of a mess right now. Um, they're pretty close to 4.2, but um, I think some are a bit lower since I can kind of feel the uh, power loss after a full charge. So uh, also this is the area that I do a lot of the work on. Um, it's a small table. It's, uh, it's like a four and a half by five foot table. Uh, I got a power supply area over there. Uh, my computer that I respond to all you guys' questions with right here. And you know, got the battery here. So, um, yeah, it's uh, mainly about you know just going through the battery, and I've got about 165 miles currently on the bike, um, and probably roughly between eight to ten uh, charges uh, on the battery. So, um, I also want to thank all of you subscribers. I've got 210 subscribers. Never in my life thought I would even get over a hundred. Uh, so thank you for subscribing to my channel and I'll try and keep the videos coming. So thank you. Now I've set up a charger. I've set up my meter and I'm getting ready to charge it again and see where everything goes. But I just want to give a quick test on my battery, which has been sitting now for literally about a month and a half. And <clears throat> I fully charged it before I set it aside. I just kind of wanted to see where the banks are kind of at once they fully charge. Um, I just basically pulled it out. Um, I usually keep it in the bike in the garage, but it's been kind of kind of cold out. We have a lot of snow outside right now and it gets down you know below 30 at night and I just don't want anything to happen to the battery uh, by getting too cold. So I brought it in um, and I wanted to make some modifications to what I've got here. I've got my wrap material. I'm gonna put some kind of cooling system on here with a fan, things like that. Um, but I'm wondering if I should even do that because once I add my second battery, it may not even need that. So um, maybe thinking over engineering, <laughs> which I tend to do sometimes over engineer things. So what I may do is just kind of test this. And once I get done with my changing out the BMS, when I get that, then I'll rewrap it with my new PVC heat shrink material that I ordered. And um, so anyways, yeah, getting off subject again. And I just want to basically show you with my meter hooked up um, that it is at, uh, what is it, 54.48. And when you divide that by 13, by the 13 cells, um, each cell on average should be at 4.19, which is still pretty good. Um, really good charge. After a month and a half, it's holding a good charge. Uh, but I'm wondering if some are higher than others. So some could be um, holding the charge while another one could be way low. One could be at 4.17, another one could be at 4.23, you know. So since I find out that this is not a true balancing board, uh, let's find out. So that's what we'll do now. Once this is done charging, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this material here and go through each bank and test each bank to see where they're actually at. So once this goes in protect mode, or once this goes in protect mode, uh, we'll, we'll test it out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and check each bank and see where they are after being fully charged. So bank one is at 4.12, or I'm sorry, 4.21, which is slightly overcharged, but not too dangerous. And the next one is 4.2 exactly. 
the third bank. Ish. <laughs> See if I can do this a little better here. All right, four point one nine eight. And we got four point two one six. Four point two one. one so far of 4.217 and 4.2 even oh that's not good that's not good So that's the one that actually went into protect mode. That's what shut this down is this last bank here. I'm guessing because it's the highest one and it's slowly backing off. So obviously I got a low bank here and I need to figure out why. Uh, check my connections. That one there. So bank 10 is low. So that's what I gotta do now, is check this bank. Figure out why it's so low. All right, so now that we've tested each bank, that's where I wanted to show you that this BMS does not fully balance, truly, this battery. Um, bank 10 is sitting at uh, 4.15, and all the other ones are you know, either at 4.2 or just slightly over 4.2 to compensate for bank 10 being so low. And I'm not sure if it's the BMS not fully charging it or if the cells are damaged in this bank uh, to where it's not fully charging um, like it should. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is throw my, one of my, uh, my variable power supplies on this bank only, set it for 4.2 and let it charge up and see if it takes a full charge. Um, the battery is showing that it's fully charged when you meter the entire thing uh, through the port here. Um, but like I said, bank 10 is low and the others are compensating, which it should not happen if this was a true BMS. So um, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my, power, my variable power supply to this one bank, get it fully charged and see uh, how it does. Um, if it has a hard time, if I feel, I'm gonna basically feel them, make sure they're not overheating, things like that. If they are overheating, that means I've got some bad cells in here. Um, hopefully not, but I'm hoping it's just the BMS not fully charging uh, this one bank. So that's what we'll do now. Okay guys, I uh, took everything apart and went ahead and did some maintenance to the, to the battery itself. Uh, basically the glue glue and stuff like that where the last time I wrote it it got pretty hot and I think what happened was it softened the glue and the battery may have moved a little bit but it basically released on like one side of the glue as you can see here I came off in the full piece so I went back through and just kind of did some maintenance to the battery like I said and made sure everything was nice and kind of glued together and it seems to be pretty good now and I went ahead and can't really see it in the camera, but 
I disconnected the BMS here. Just, just in case I mess up and I short something out, I don't want to fry the BMS even though I am going to be replacing it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook up my power supply here, uh, which is my variable power supply. i got to adjust it once I turn it on. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in case you don't know how. Um, and hook it up directly to the bank, the number 10 bank that is low on voltage. So like I said, or like I did earlier, I fully charged it. It finally hit the the BMS's protection and it shut off and I noticed bank 10 was low on voltage so uh, that like I said it explains now why when I wrote it last time for a few minutes I noticed it was like a slight power loss and bank 10 is probably the, the culprit for that being the way it was so let's go ahead and get started on hooking this guy up so as you can see just turning it on my power supply is sitting at 4.3. This thing had a, has a tendency to kind of adjust as it warms up. Right now it's kind of high and usually it'll start kind of coming down on voltage as it starts to warm up. So I'm going to go ahead and set it for now um, to see where it's at and adjust accordingly to the voltage that I want it to be at to recharge this one cell or this one bank. So we're sitting at 4.36 volts, which is obviously too high for the lithiums. So I'm going to go to my fine and adjust it down until I get to a maximum of 4.25. So just a little bit left. positive side and I've just kind of hooked it up uh, right there so it is actually charging the positive of this whole bank here and that's how it's doing that so and then we'll check it when it's done see if it actually took a good charge all right guys so we're like 30 minutes later you know for you guys it seems like it's a second later but we're gonna go ahead and measure this thing and see where it's at So it looks like I'm at 419 currently right now, and that's with a charge. So if you take the charge off, it's actually going to probably drop down to like 417. So it'll spring back down a little bit. So we probably got a good, another good hour or two before it actually fully charges. Uh, just remember, it's trying to charge eight cells in parallel right now. So it's going to take a little bit of time. 
Uh, I thought about putting one of the IMAX B6s on there, but that's fine. I'll just leave it on the variable charger and uh, keep going from there. Alright guys, so I've already charged up bank number 10 up to 4.2 now. It was at 4.15 um, and it's holding at 4.2, which is a good sign. And I'm actually working on discharging the higher stuff now. Uh, this one was at 4.217 and this one is at 4. I believe uh, 2.12 uh, or yeah 4.212 and then 4.212 and 4.215 so I'm going to get all of them down to 4.20 or very close to it throw the charger back on and see where it goes from there all right guys so here's the battery with the BMS um, and let's see I want to kind of show you guys how I hooked up the, the BMS so here is my schematic as you can see this is this is the board of the BMS and there is a ground wire that comes off of right here is B minus that goes directly to the first bank of batteries negative and then the wiring for the balancing begins for the number two negative. So that's what I'm going to show you now on how I wired this. So I numbered each one, as you can see, to kind of help make sense of how I did this. And so the negative from the board is actually attaching right here. Uh, let me see if I can do this, get all this out of the way. So you can see it there, attached there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the balancing wires. So the first wire, this is number one. Um, on, on this connector, it basically runs up and connects to the negative of number two. So, kind of make doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, why number one goes number two, but it does. So you'll you'll find out in the end. Um, so that goes to number one. The next the next wire goes to number three, and these are all connecting to the negatives. So you can see how this is going to the negative, and the same thing negative for three, four, five, six all the way up and then the last negative goes to the 13 uh, negative um, and the last wire in this in this connector is actually a positive and it runs all the way up and goes to the positive of the battery so that's how I wired this up I hope that makes sense um, hopefully I didn't go too fast uh, just keep watching the video over and over again as you can the more you the more you watch it and you, the easier it becomes to understand so and for those of you who do not know what these little orange things are here these are resettable fuses that I uh, soldered in for extra protection they're rated at 4 amps um, at 16 volts obviously I'll never get them up to 16 volts but that's just the rating that they're at and they're rated for 4 amps so if this battery decides to go berserk uh, let's say I take a spill on the bike I damage this battery it wants to release as much energy as possible this fuse is going to stop it so once it senses that it's over four amps it opens up shuts down that battery um, unless I put a hole in it or something like that or internally it shorts out then I can't do anything about that but if the wiring somehow shorts out and it's trying to spit out more than four amps that fuse is actually going to shut it off and it will actually when it senses that it's good to go it'll reclose and then if it's still trying to spit out more than four amps, it'll open back up. It just saves the battery from catching That's fire. pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions.